Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. Uh, in this video, it's really the first part of the build series, and I'm just going to be covering how to install the nut carriers into the extrusions, which we're then going to be mounting the rails onto. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna start by populating nut carriers, and these are M2 nuts, and then uh, these pieces here are the M2 nut adapters. Okay, for this step, as you can see, I'm going to need the five uh, <clears throat> printed parts here as well as the m2 nuts they say if you want to populate all of them you need 50 um, I'm probably just going to do it every other one like they have in the written instructions okay here I am just kind of inserting them in mine are a little tight which is good because I've heard some guys um, they, they recommend you super glue them in or crazy glue them but mine are definitely not going to need that um, so if you're under extruding I could see where you might run into some issues um, and then these things will fall out but mine are mine are pretty good nice and tight okay one other thing i'll point out is that in the directions it has you putting them in this one this one this one this one and this one so just make sure at a minimum you do those um, from what i understand you can do them all if you want but i think this is probably plenty okay the next thing we need to do is find these e extrusions and uh, they have this little hole right here on the end you're also going to need your rails for this step, and you also need these centered rail guide pieces. You're also going to need um, plenty of these M2x6s. Okay, I've just about inserted all the nut carriers. <clears throat> just doing this last one, they just slide right in real easily, on, at least on mine. And you can kind of move them up here. We're not going to get real precise yet, but um, the rails that are going to sit on here are going to have to have a 38 millimeter distance from the end of the rail so we'll be checking that in a minute okay i've got the first rail out and just took it out of the package it seems pretty good um it's a little goopy especially the the carriage so i think i'm just going to clean that off a little bit so depending on how fancy you want to get um on cleaning these you can either just wipe them down um, which i think is all that's really needed or you can use a degreaser on them and completely clean them and then lube them up with like a synthetic oil. This is the lube that I use, they're the oil that I use once I get them cleaned. Um, and then you just gotta make sure periodically you put some of that on there so everything's moving smoothly. Okay, all I'm doing to clean these is just taking a paper towel, shop towel, and just uh, giving it a good wipe. Kind of drying off all that. Some people will also use a WD-40 and just kind of do a light spray, kind of help clean it. Um, after you do that, you know, you can certainly do that, but I don't think these are, these certainly aren't that bad. Um, that protective layer, or that, uh, <coughs> the grease that's just there is more of a protective coating, but uh, it's not really that heavy. It was just a little heavier on the real, on the carriage itself. So I'm not concerned about that. Everything moves real freely. Okay, one of my reels had a little bit of a rough spot right in here, so I'm going to clean this one a little more thoroughly, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and lube all of them as well. I'm using this uh, Goo Gone. Um, this is actually a pretty good degreaser, um, so I happen to use this for a lot of stuff, and it works pretty well. So after putting this on and just drying it with a towel, um, things are a lot better. And, and it's moving more freely, so I, th I think I would recommend um, using some kind of a cleaner or degreaser on these. All right, all I'm doing here is um, I'm, I've got the guides in place. I've still got the rail on, or the carriage on, and I'm just put basically just uh, screwing things in. The other thing that I did uh, before I started screwing things down is um, I also measured this real, real carefully to make sure there's 38 millimeters uh, between the edge of the rail and uh, the edge of the uh, <clears throat> aluminum extrusion. The other thing I'm doing is for each screw, I'm gonna put a little bit of this blue uh, foam, uh, gel. It's basically like a Loctite. So you just put a little bit on the tip there um, before you screw it in. Kind of helps make, helps keep it um, from loosening up during the vibrations. In the past, I've, off, I've also used blue Loctite, but um, Apparently, blue Loctite can um, is problematic with the ABS parts, and there's a chemical in there 
that um, can loosen it up or just eat away the ABS. And here's a good technique if you have a magnetic screwdriver, <clears throat> you can just kind of dip it in there, get a little bit on there. That's probably a little bit too much, but just wipe away just so you get just a little little bit of it on there. Don't need a whole lot. And then just screw it in. Okay, I've got the first one done. I'm gonna move the rail guides to the next one and basically rinse and repeat. The other thing that the book recommends you, do, or the instructions recommend you do, is either tape your rail in place or mine came with these little black stoppers. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use those. That way um, you don't want these things falling off because if they do, uh, there's a good chance that <clears throat> you might lose some bearings when you try to put it back on. So it's best just to put something in there to constrain it. Okay, for the Z-axis, you're actually going to need the C extrusion, which is a little bit different. You have holes on both the ends. And with the Z extrusion, um, you only want about 33 millimeters instead of the 38, like you did on the, um, <clears throat> the Y rails. Okay, so at this point, I've got the two Y extrusions with the 38 millimeters and the hole here for, for each of them. And then I've got two of the Z with the hole here with 33 millimeters from the edge. All right, if you're like me, you may be wondering what to do with the fifth rail. And uh, I found out that that's on page 67. It's actually going to be used for the x-axis, and it's going to use the A extrusion, which doesn't have any holes or anything in it. So that's going to come up later, um, so don't worry about that extra nut carrier that you've still got. You'll be using that in a future step.